In this video, we'll take a look at visualizing proportions and percentages in Tableau. And we'll also introduce some new visualizations as a way of communicating them. So if you follow along in your book, the author dissects the on base percentages of the 2012 New York Yankees. I realized that in Maine, maybe working with the Yankees is not a popular topic. It would be with me. Uh, however, let's pick a different team and apply some of the same principles uh, to proportions and percentages. First thing we need to do is get some data or get a data set. So we can get one actually for free at baseballreference.com. This is a massive site dedicated to uh, baseball reference and baseball statistics. And one of the ways we can pull data, just like they did in the book, is by going to, in this case, we want to find a team. And so instead of the 2000, 12 New York Yankees. Let's take a look at a different team, maybe from uh, closer in our past. How about the 2019 Los Angeles Dodgers? How do we go? We go to baseballreference.com. We can select a team. So I selected National Leagues 2019. And I also select Los Angeles Dodgers. Here, you'll find that you have the ability to find these statistics. And they have everything you want. And so it says share and more the share table that exists here. These are the team batting statistics and this is the one we want to look at. So if we go to share and more, get as Excel workbook, even though it's experimental, it will download here. And I'll check on this by clicking on it. Yes, I want to open it. And we'll see that this file does include rank, includes a number of things here. Team totals, rank in 15 NL teams, non-pitcher totals, pitcher totals. I don't really want this stuff, so I'm getting rid of it and cleaning that up. I don't want the rank, but we can keep that. I also want to strip out. I don't want the uh, asterisk there. And when you strip those uh, asterisks out, this is what the list looks like. And I've also removed those totals. If I need totals, these are things that I can do in Tableau. I don't, I don't really want them in here. And I've saved this as the 2019 Dodgers. And this is the data set that I've included for you to use so that way you you're starting with a clean data set and just remember that uh and the reason i included this is that uh in the course i've been trying to give uh, clean data sets to you as much as possible uh to help us focus on the tableau techniques but remember just like you would cover in your initial da courses and some of the other courses you'll take it's important to uh work and clean your data and prepare it for analysis. And so that will save you a lot of work uh, later as you as you try to visualize and analyze data. So just keep that in mind. And so in any case, we have our 2019 Dodgers. And now one of the other projects that I worked on was we'll talk about comparing their home runs uh, in 2018 and 2019. And I've already uh, taken that data from the web and uh, cleaned it and put it together in another worksheet. And we'll use that uh, later in this video. So right now we, we have the Dodgers uh, worksheet that we were looking 
uh, looking at. So now if we open Tableau and start to think about uh, the materials we're looking at in this uh, chapter and in this section of our course, uh, we're not only looking at visualizing proportions and percentages, uh, we're also learning some more Tableau techniques. And these are, are applicable to a number of scenarios. So in this scenario, we'll follow along with sort of the example that you've read about, and then we'll uh, have you apply it in some different ways. And so while it's very easily adaptable to baseball, uh, I think you're going to find that this is a set of techniques that's very commonly adapted uh, to sales and then later visualizing um, targets. So if you work with a number of KPIs in your organization, so if I was looking at uh, a visualization that I wanted to create of showing, uh, let's say, our our, our customer service department and looking at uh, their ability to hit certain KPIs over the over the course of a year and then comparing it to previous years, uh, we'll learn a little bit about those visualizations and really what they would be are portions and percentages. And so here, all we're doing is we're 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 looking at proportions, which are ratios, which are expressed as values from zero to one. The numerator is a partial amount, the denominator is the total, and percentages are basically ratios expressed as an amount in each hundred. And so they communicate different types of comparisons, a part to a whole, some current to historical, and actual to target. And so these are commonly used in analyzing any number, obviously, of business uh, or organizational uh, kinds of visualizations. And so in baseball, in, in other sports, it becomes very easy to see how this is uh, measured. And so uh, your book talks about, uh, if you're into baseball, you know that one of the popular statistics being used is the on-base percentage, uh, which is basically the number of times a player gets on base. Uh, it does not matter if it's a walk or a hit or a hit by pitch. It, basically, you take all of those things that would get a player onto first base or onto a base, and then you divide that uh, by the number of plate appearances um, minus sacrifice hits. And it's that's what it's called. It's actually very rarely expressed as a percentage, so no one says 30% of the time or anything like that, the on-base percentage is actually 308. Very similarly, you'll find in baseball, uh, the batting average, right? You know, we call it the batting average, and it's the percentage of times that the player um, is, is getting onto base, but it, it, there are certain limitations. It's not the same as on-base percentage. And actually, if you're very interested in baseball, in baseball statistics and its history, you'll also find that uh, batting average comes to us as a borrowed statistic that was originally uh, marked in, in cricket as a number of interesting scoring things in baseball started as. So um, in any case, if you want to call the office someday and talk about baseball, please do. Uh, let's keep moving on. So in any case, one of the things we're going to look at are visualizations of players' batting averages. A uh, very common statistic, right, that we're looking at. And so uh, we need to connect to our data source first. So uh, we'll connect to our data source, which is the Excel file. And I have it listed as 2019 Dodgers. And I open that. And we'll see that we have a pretty straightforward worksheet. Uh, the ranking, uh, this is just their ranking that they had a number of position, the name, age, games, plate appearances, at-bats, runs, hits, doubles, triples, home runs, runs batted in, stolen bases, and so on. And so we have a number of categories here, and we'll see here the on-base percentage is expressed as a decimal. The slugging percentage is another percentage that's uh, expressed as a decimal. Uh, the on-base plus slugging percentage, o OPS, is the combination of the on-base and slugging percentages, and that's expressed as a decimal as well. So um, baseball is a funny game. But if we were to go to sheet one to demonstrate our technique, 
What we're simply looking at is is batting average. So if I go and I pull name, which is the player's name, and I put that in rows, because that's a dimension, I have all of the player names, and now I can just pull on base percentage or batting average or whatever measure I'm looking at. But right now I want to look at batting average, which is BA. So I pull that up and I get this lovely uh, bar graph, very simple visualization, a simple bar chart. Now there's a couple of things we'd probably want to do right away. This isn't a meaningful, very helpful visualization. We see that, yep, we've got, we've got some bars, we've got some measurements uh, for batting averages, but we want to sort them. So we'll go do the classic and sort from in a descending order from the maximum to the minimum. And so we see that, wow, how come I've never heard of Dennis Santana or Caleb Ferguson much? And what we might find out is that some players only play in the major leagues for a short time. They fill in for an injured player. They fill in. And you may see this, by the way, if you're analyzing KPI charts in your organization where you say, wow, so-and-so like totally maxed out these KPIs and has by far exceeded everyone. And then you realize that, oh, well, this person was a temp who was here for two days. So that's not a statistically significant sample. So you're probably not going to use that in your major analysis. So you're probably going to say, okay, part of what we're looking at are, you know, people who are hitting these targets over this long haul. And so there needs to be a certain amount of time they're on the job in order for you to, to get a reliable measure here. So the same with baseball. And what you're saying is that, okay, when we find out, if I was to go back to this data source really quick and look at plate appearances for uh, Dennis Santana, right? And I look around and I just try to organize this from the maximum to the minimum, right? Or if I go here and I just pull up batting averages and I go maximums, let's see, Dennis Santana. Okay, Dennis Santana came to the plate twice. He played in three games. He's a pitcher. He came played in three games. Okay, Caleb Ferguson came to the plate twice. <laughs> Brock Stewart three times, so... We probably want to filter out those outliers, you know, players who really didn't have much. So what we would do is apply a filter from another measure, and that other measure would be plate appearances. So I'd go to PA for plate appearances, and I'd drag the pill into filter, the filter card, and I'll do it right this time so it actually sticks there. There we go. And I'll say it's the sum, because I want the sum of plate appearances. And you'll see that I get a range of values. And what I'm looking for are people, right, who've had a minimum of 100 plate appearances. Because that means they'd been in for a number of games. So that's a statistically significant sample. We can see that the maximum on this chart is 661. So it's a nice chunk of a season. It's a long enough time to get a statistically relevant or significant sample of, play, of, of at bats. So I can move that slider. I could also move the slider here to what I want. And in fact, I can leave that filter there. So it's 100. I don't want to include null values. I click OK. Notice how this list just shortened. <laughs> OK, so now I've got batting average. And I see it expressed in this way. And so now, I, now that I've introduced that filter, I might want to leave that filter in, by the way, uh, in case I have a data user that's looking to do some 
some uh, adjustments. So I can also just go to the filter card here and then go show filter. And then dra I like to drag it over here. So that way a user can always drag the filter and alter the visualization to meet their research needs. So it's pretty handy. So um, we've used the, the filter very easily, very simply. We have the filtered chart and now we wanna clean this up. So let's say we can change the view here to a dot chart, which is one of the examples they used in, uh, in the book. I kind of like the bars better than the dot chart, but we should get used to using different types. So if we use this, we'll see that the it's changed some things. So I want to take that name and I want to put it back in columns. And actually, I want to put that in rows in here in columns. I'm sorry, wrong way. There we go. And now we've got the dot chart back. So we can see there. Now I want to once again reset. So you'll notice that when that visualization changed, it reset a bunch of things. When I went to the show dot chart, it went to some defaults and I once again had to had to reset this. But now we're back and we're running this way. We could also, there's a number of different ways you could experiment. And so here in this uh, shelf area here, you can change it up. So if you wanted to say, oh, wow, if I wanted to take that batting average sum, right, if I could see it, right, and I wanted to use size to convey that, I can also say that the larger or the higher batting average gets a bigger circle and then adjust that by going like this. That's another way. That's not very visual. That that's not very visually helpful because there's you don't see that much difference here, and it's not really conveying it very well. So let's undo that. I just wanted to demonstrate that's a potential. So here's your colors. You could turn them black if you wanted, but it's. The Dodger, so I could turn it Dodger blue. That's kind of light, so maybe that doesn't work. Okay. Now there's another way. If I wanted to use the exact color of Dodger blue, I could I could go to more colors here, and you'll see this panel come up for more colors. You could actually use the eyedropper tool and find a Dodger logo and click on that and that would be the color it would use. I, I don't want to do that so we're not going to. I think this will choose a darker color, this darker blue. In fact I'm going to use this black color because I think it stands out and it's a little easier to read. So we've got the dot chart we're here, so now we need to get some calculations to see some other pieces of data. So suppose what I wanted to do was show uh, the name, that player's position. Like what positions do these players play? What's their batting average? And then rank them. And we would be using some similar techniques to stuff we've already done. So if I would take, for example, players, I've got my, my name. So next thing I would want to do is position. So I just drag the position pill into rows like you did in our last exercise. Okay, so now we have the position of each player. Okay, very good. Now we want um, also to show batting average here. What I will do actually to make this work is I'll right click on it and I'll duplicate it and I have my batting average copy and I drag that up here to dimensions and then I put it over here okay so I've added those now let's say that I wanted to rank them I use the same technique I used uh, in the last lesson so I would go to my tableau my analysis I can create calculated field and I can call this rank and 
Here we'll use the same technique, index. Right? Default table calculation. In this case, I'm just going to use automatic and see what it comes up with there. And now I've got rank. I'm going to change it to discrete or convert to discrete and drag it up here before name. And there I have a ranking, I have the name, I have positions, my batting average, and here we go. So that was a pretty simple visualization. Some steps that you're familiar with and you're simply mashing them up and reassembling them. And so the next visualization that we work through is what happens when we have to do some more calculating. And that's where we start to add a little bit extra with these things. So table calculations are really important. And so one of the things we're going to find out here, for example, is we want to specifically look at home runs. And we don't want to just see home runs. We want to see what's the total home runs hit by the team. And then how each player contributed to that total in a visualization that really pops the eyes and shows not only their number and percentage, but also how you know, the, who are the biggest contributors in one visualization? And so uh, we don't need to really go crazy racking our brain for, uh, you know, calculating these fields in outside of Tableau. Tableau can do all this stuff for us, so we can make this a pretty quick work. So let's say we wanted to see the percentages of the total of home runs each player hit. So we can start by taking the player's name, put that on the row shelf, right? So we once again, we start with our dimension, dimension goes on the row shelf. So you're seeing that commonality here where we start with. And now we want to see percentage of total. So let's look for home runs. And I take home runs and put it in columns. Now that's the sum of home runs. But I'm looking for the percentage of the total. And so let's do our filtering again first. So let's go this way. And now we need to filter. And because we're going to be looking at the percentage of home runs. And by the way, through the magic, I'm going to clear this table calc so we have our total home runs. I want to see the percentage of home runs what each player hit is a percentage of the total home runs hit by the major league club and so I still need a filter because we have all of these players who didn't hit a home run so I'm only interested in visualizing for people who hit a home run so I drag that to filters click on sum because I'm looking at the sum of home runs and I'm saying that I'm only interested in people with one or more home runs and so now we have everyone who hit at least one to the maximum Corey Bellinger or Cody Bellinger uh, hitting 47. Now I can insert the quick table calc. So I want to see the percentage, not the total. So if I go to the pill, the sum, right, of HR and click that Chevron on the pill and go to quick table calculation, you'll see. I can take running total, difference, percent of total. Okay, percent of total. And there we go. And that's how we get the percentage of totals. And so now I've got this quick table calculation. I see how the percentage of totals ran for the Dodgers. And now we want to do some more. So we want to visualize these in a way uh, that also shows the overall team number. So one of the ways we can compare this to the overall team number is we go to the analysis menu up top here and we go to uh, totals. Right. So first, in order to show that, I want to get back to home run totals. So I can go back here and I can clear the quick uh, the table calculation for percentages. And now we're back to the total number. And so now 
I want to go to analysis and here in analysis, I can go to totals and I can go to show uh, row grand totals or here column grand totals. And what that'll show is the total number of home runs hit by the Dodgers as a team. And then here I have the number hit by each player. And now I want to show those percentages. So one way I can do it is by labeling. And so I, for a quick label, I can just go up here, right, and click on this, and it show, labels, it shows the, um, the number of home runs for each one. But in this case, I know I want further manipulation. So what I do is I take that HR figure here, and I drop it here in labels, right here. So that adds it. Now if I go to this, this pill, I can do the same thing. So here I can use quick table calculation, and now I can go percent of total. And now it shows the percent of total for each one of these players. So you can get pretty fancy with it. So a lot of the same, the same calculations that you're using up here in columns, you can put down here if it's in the marks card. So now we have that. Now, if I go here and I decided, well, I want to change this, this here, this percent of total, right? This grand total. I can go to analysis, totals, and uncheck the show called grand totals, and it removes it. Now, if I want to do rank, I can drag rank. And there we go. And so now one of the questions we have is, is there a way to visualize this better or is there a more compelling way of visualizing this? So uh, we could take a look at a number of types of charts. We could use a stacked bar. So if we go to show me, there's a number of types. We could try stacked bars. We could try a pie chart. And, you know, there's a number of visualizations we can try. A pie chart doesn't really work so well because you have so many slices in the pie. Uh, the tree map doesn't really help all that much. Uh, you want some sort of compelling visualization. And so here we could go back and use a dot chart uh, again. But the book shows the idea of a waterfall chart, and this can actually be uh, quite compelling. So <clears throat> one of the things we can do is create a new visualization. So let's start a new sheet. So a new visualization. And here, this isn't the most efficient. It doesn't always look right. But uh, in this case, I think this, this is actually a really helpful visualization that's quite compelling. Um, so we create a column for each player by taking name and we drag it over here, right? And we drag it into um, columns because we want name on the columns side, okay? And now we want to go to a Gantt chart, a Gantt bar chart. So if we go here in the marks card, we can see this automatic. That means Tableau sort of picks the automatic visualization. So we can go here and you can go to Gantt bar. Okay. Now, if we drag the home run, this regular home run, onto the rows shelf, we see a view with little dots and things or lines and, you know, we can even arrange it so we can go like this 
Now we still want to do some filtering, right? Remember, we want our home runs filtered. So our home run goes to filters, sum. We want only the home run people who hit home runs. So that's there. So that's better. Now, if we can go to um, the HR total here, and we add a quick table calculation, right? <clears throat> and we select running total, okay? You'll see this rearranged to like a, a, a cascade, or like a wave. And so each player's home run numbers right starts at a height equals the sum of the preceding players home runs and it grows accordingly and we also want to make sure that we show grand total so if we go to analysis and you can always add with analysis you can always add right if you remember your totals you can show your grand totals so We'll get to that stage. Next thing we want to do is <clears throat> make the waterfall chart look uh, in a way so you have to kind of trick it. So if we right click on HR here, right, and we create a calculated field on HR and create calculated field. We have to trick it to make the cascade, which means that we actually are going to fake this thing and uh, create a column that stretches down, which means we have to go negative. So we <clears throat> take this formula, HR times negative one. So that'll give me the negative and it'll allow it to stretch down like that. We click OK. And now we drag this new, well, I want to undo that. I want to go to HR, create calculated field, HR times negative one, and rename this HR revised, or HR revised, and click OK. Now we have HR revised. Now if I drag that onto the size card here in the marks card, now we have that cascade. And now if I go to analysis and I show um, totals, right, and I show row grand totals, here we go. We have the waterfall chart showing each player, right? And now all we have to do is take our initial HR and drag it over to label. And that shows how many home runs each player made. And so the final things I want to do is go into this bottom area with the labels, click on it, and I right click. And it says rotate label. We can take a look and see how that looks. I don't like it so much. So we might have to move the size back a bit and see if that helps or maybe we go here and say fit with and there we go that still looks kind of crowded how about entire view that looks crowded standard and so maybe that's not going to work so well so we go in and then we rotate label again and that looks like the best way we're going to see it. And so there you go. You looked at examining uh, how to do the uh, waterfall cascade and some of those percentages.